Good evening, everyone. I'm Anthony Joshua, and you're watching The Graham Norton Show. Hey, hey, Anthony, Anthony, I'm Tom Hanks, and I'm supposed to be the one to say you're watching The Graham Norton Show. I got it first. So I'm Anthony Joshua, right, right. and... You know what? I knew it was going to come down to this. Go ahead, roll credits while I throw this guy a beat. And welcome. Happy New Year, all. Hey, I tell you, we've got some great men and women on the show tonight. And before anyone asks, yes, they're all being paid the same. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, are you all well? Now, I only ask that because I know a lot of people have been sick over Christmas and New Year, haven't they? You know, even Theresa May had something on Pleasant she couldn't seem to get rid of. Yeah. <laughs> Jeremy Hunt. He's like the political equivalent of herpes, isn't he? <laughs> Theresa May said her reshuffle would make the Tory cabinet look less pale, male, and stale. So, whereas before it looked like this, oh, now it looks like this. <laughs> so, well done, Theresa. Uh, meanwhile, in America, a new book about Donald Trump's presidency has caused quite the storm. It's called Fire and Fury. It came out last week. I mean, the book, not Trump. That would be a story, that would be great. <laughs> Not on my watch. Uh, <laughs> Now, I have to warn you, it's one of those books with a very sad ending. He's still president. <laughs> the book claims Trump steals all his ideas from other people. Well, he certainly got the idea of the Mexican wall from when Melania redid their bedroom. <laughs> yeah. Box office records with the fight of the decade. He's an Olympic gold medalist in MBE and the heavyweight champion of the world. Please welcome Anthony Joshua. <laughs> That's Anthony Joshua. Hello, sir. Very nice to see you come in. Thank Have you. a seat, you. Anthony Joshua. <laughs> this Emmy-winning British actress continues to wow audiences worldwide in Game of Thrones. Now lending her voice to Ardman's latest animated hit, Early Man. It's Maisie Williams. Hello, my dear. <laughs> Lovely to see you. There's Anthony, amazing. And what better way to start the year than with a double Oscar winning Hollywood great? Please welcome one of our all time favorite guests. It's the great Tom Hanks. Welcome all. Thank you so much for being here. Lovely to see you all. Uh, now, I suppose I should check. So, uh, Tom, are you a boxing fan? Are you aware of Anthony Joshua's work? I'm aware that there are always a bodacious heavyweight champion of the world, and I'm sitting on the couch with him right now. <laughs> yeah. He'd better not piss me off. <laughs> 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 and it was everyone, everyone loves Game of Thrones. Everyone loves Game of Thrones. Yes. yes. It, I mean, it must be such a weird thing. You're in the biggest show in the world. Well done, you. No. Yeah, it's good. Where do I go now? <laughs> yeah, no, really. <laughs> and, uh, no, other places, bigger things. <laughs> Don't crush the girl's dreams, Graham. Um, but here's an honor. It's very rare we have a guest who is on a stamp. Oh, look at that. Oh, look, have you seen this yet? Oh, look at that. Maisie Williams on a stamp. That's a proper thing. Yeah. 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 I've not actually seen this yet. It's a stamp. In, in America, you... <laughs> in, America in America, you have to be dead to get on it. <laughs> <laughs> Was your character killed? <laughs> no. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's nice. It's a collector's piece. It, no, it is a collector's piece. Yeah. yeah. Please let me let me put on my glasses <laughs> so I can see what this. Oh my! How fantastic! How much does this stamp go for? One pence. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a first class stamp. Oh, whatever, first, that, whatever that is. For what? I don't know. You don't know. You and your email. <laughs> <laughs> Just because you're in a movie called The Post. <laughs> A lot of stamps in that movie, let me tell you. <laughs> and, and then, and weirdly, Anthony Joshua has his own post box. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah, do. Yeah. We've got a picture of that. Yeah. Uh, now, oh. uh, this is where is this? This is in Watford in Hertfordshire. Lovely. And yeah. how do we know it's yours? I don't know if my name's on it. I don't know but what. But you know it's yours. I know. That's yeah. the main thing. That's the main I know thing. it's mine. How do you know his isn't the newspaper box? <laughs> the red box. <laughs> <laughs> I'm claiming that as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. I claim everything. You got a gold and a red medal. The Olympics were very proud of you. And uh, Anthony Joshua, he's only two belts away from total world domination. Wow. But here's the thing: you are actively looking for a cool boxing name. I haven't got one. No. So it's Anthony AJ Joshua right now. You can say that, yeah, Anthony AJ. Yeah. Initials Joshua. I mean, that's your name. That's my yeah, name. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, it works. I, I, I can say that. <laughs> Yeah. You're right. Yeah. It works. Yeah. <laughs> but have you tried any cool names? Honestly. Um, Big Josh. They call my dad Big Josh. I'm Big Josh. I don't know. I don't know. Mailbox Josh. Mailbox. <laughs> <laughs> I deliver. I deliver. Oh! Oh, I think I... Yes, that's it. That's it. Right here, my friend. Oh. Tom Hanks did yeah. Very good. Uh, and before we move on, uh, I have a thank you. I have a thank you to say because Tom Hanks, very kindly, I was at work and I got this. You sent wow. me a copy oh, of your this. book. I and I was, you know, thrilled, I thought, because it's a lovely copy. Hold that bad boy up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I got the book yeah. and then I opened it up. I opened it up and look. It was signed. I like that. Uh, to <laughs> Graham Norton. Enjoy the read, Tom Hanks. Now, I have to say, I'll be honest. When I saw it was to Graham Norton, I thought, he's no recollection of who I am. He's just been <laughs> sat in a room and told to write my name. Uh, but I didn't mind. I was still thrilled. But now, I feel you didn't think I was going to read it, did you? I thought that you would put it on a pile of other things that came to you unbidden and it would lay there for years. Yes. And uh, can you tell the people what you did to ensure that I, you knew whether or not I read it? Well, the, the, we, the, the, the frame canary in a coal mine is a little <laughs> thing you put in a contract that says if that is in your dressing room, that means they've read your contract. Uh -huh. I mean, like, I insist on, you know, brown M&Ms only. So if you come in and only brown M&Ms are there, ah, these people have read their Cutter. They saw the canary in the coal mine. So I put a little message in there from you to see if, in fact, you would, in fact, read the book. Yes, because when I got to page uh, 57, I got this <laughs> 57. message. <laughs> Graham, <laughs> screw you. <laughs> I'm so glad I read it. <laughs> <laughs> Why I didn't put it on page 357, I never knew. I gave, I gave you a, I gave you some slack there. Do you do that for all of them? That's a uh, funny I thing to, to do. the people I think deserve a little nudge. <laughs> yes, yes, I do. Uh, listen, uh, Tom Hanks, you're here to tell us about your new movie, uh, the Steven Spielberg movie, The Post. Yes. Uh, it opens next Friday, the 19th. And, I mean, this is... It's one of those... The pedigree is crazy. Mm. It's Hanks, it's Street, it's Spielberg. Yeah. Uh, that's a lot of... Marquee. Oh no dear. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, big trailers. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I we all read this independently of each other and said, "Well, I'd like to be involved in this." And lo and behold, Magic Merrill did too. And then yeah. I got the call from Stephen and said he was going to suit me up and put me in again. So. And have you ever come close to working with Meryl Streep before? Not a whit. Uh, actually, I was officially thank you. Oh, I had, had to say the title of the movie first. Um, I was officially a producer of Mamma Mia. <gasps> oh yes. How about that? Yes. Thank yeah. Cliche. Yeah. No, no, no. no. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on me at two on the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's yeah. coming. And uh, I tried, I actually tried out for the role as I wanted to hire <laughs> myself. <laughs> but my singing voice would have scared the children. So, uh, <laughs> I gave it other, but no, this was, the, this was the first time that I got to uh, call her a, a, a peer in a, in a cohort. Wow. It's hard to get used to working with Meryl. Because she has these trumpet players that come on to the set just before she does. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Meryl Street, please do not look her in the eye. <laughs> comes in and she me. I'm ragging on her. She's, she's a great fun and a magnificent person to work with. But the story about the Washington Post, I, I tell the people about who you play. The Washington, yeah. I play Ben Bradley, and she plays Catherine Graham of the Washington Post of all the president's men fame, Nixon. Watergate. Mm -hmm. This actually happened uh, prior to that, when it was the old New York Post and was a little poorer. The, the Pentagon Papers, the top secret
secret report on Americans' involvement in the Vietnam War is, is printed by the New York Times for three days. And as competitors, we want to be able to report the same story as well, but we don't have the Pentagon Papers. While we get our sources, the Justice Department and the Richard Nixon uh, um, uh, White House shuts down the New York Times from printing any more about this story. So for us to get them and to write them up and to put and to print them ourselves risked uh, Catherine Graham losing the newspaper, myself being thrown in jail uh, as, as literally uh, for a seditious act against the state. And it is really chilling because you use the real uh, Nixon tapes. Oh, the, yeah. uh, our movie stars as Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon, and he is fantastic. <laughs> He's great. The, the thing about working with Stephen is much of this is deals with old-fashioned telephones. No one can capture the suspicion or the suspense of either a phone call being made or a phone call being waited upon. So there's an awful lot of these fabulously dynamic scenes in the movie. <laughs> Hello? And there's another one, old-fashioned uh, pay phones, you know, coin boxes. Chicking, 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 chicking. It goes on forever, and you are on the edge of your seat. Make a call. Please make a phone call. That's what Steven Spielberg could do like nobody else. Listen, we've got a clip. This is uh, your character, Ben Bradley, uh, presenting your dilemma to uh, oh. publisher Catherine Graham. So, can I ask you a hypothetical question? Oh, dear, I don't like hypothetical questions. Well, I don't think you're going to like the real one, either. Do you have the papers? Not yet. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Because you know the, the uh, position that would put me in. You know, we have language in the prospectus. That yeah, I know, I know that the bankers which... can change their mind. That's, and I know what is at stake. You know, the only couple I knew that both Kennedy and LBJ wanted to socialize with was you and your husband, and you own the damn paper. Since that's the way things worked. Politicians and the press, they trusted each other so they could go to the same dinner party and drink cocktails and tell jokes while there was a war ben, raging in Vietnam. I don't know what we're talking about. I, I'm not protecting Lyndon. No, you got his former Secretary of Defense, Robert McNamara, the man who commissioned this study. He's I'm one of about a dozen him. party I'm guests out on your protecting any of them. Here. I'm protecting the paper. No, there you go. Yeah. You know what's very hard about that? If I may say, um... In the United States, I grew up saying Vietnam. Just on the West Coast, we said Vietnam, Vietnam, Vietnam. And Ben Bradley called it Vietnam. And it was mm -hmm. often time... It, it said, listen, while there was a war going on in Vietnam, I, it was, <laughs> I, had to, I had to retrain myself my, from vocalization. And this is... Uh, we were counting up. I think it's about the seventh or eighth real person you've played if, if, the, people, oh, yeah, if the people are still alive do you do you like to meet them do you seek them out yes and in fact I say to them I've said this to Richard Phillips and I said it to Charlie Wilson uh, Jim Lovell I said now look I'm playing you so for good or for bad I'm you mm -hmm. and you're gonna get that for a long time I'm you <laughs> I am you deal with it <laughs> now as you I'm going to say things you never said. <laughs> I'm going to go places you never were. I'm going to do things you never did. That being the case, I'd like to be as authentic as possible. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest is trade and cards. And when you meet them, are you just looking for their blessing, or do you kind of absorb something? Do you get something out of it? I do want to know what they have to say about it, because they've always read the screenplay, and I want to say, if you think anything is actual horsecock in this, let me know, because did, what did I just say? <laughs> we all heard you. If there's, some, if there's some nonsense in this, please... I didn't please know that was an expression. <laughs> Once again, we've got He Delivers, and you have what I just said as well. It's all mind right here on your top-notch show. Um, 
Uh, you want to know if they have any problems because there's things that just would never happen. You want to you want to be right and authentic. But really, what I'm looking for is a tick, a gesture, a, a, a posture, a way to stand, a, a turn of phrase that I can, that I can turn into my own and, and reflect them somehow. Because it's inevitable, Eddie Jordan. We will be queuing up to see the Anthony Joshua story. So uh, when the biopic is made, uh, who who would you like to play you? Tom Hanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will say things you never said. I will do things you never did. I will go to places you never, never been. Been. That being said, you are going to be, I'm going to be you. <laughs> What's interesting is the news of today, with all the dynamics of fake news and everything, and then what you just starred in. What's the feedback? of the times because you brought a film up. Actually, you know? they, a lot of people are saying that, well, you obviously made this about current events. You obviously changed things around mm. and steered it okay, towards, towards 2017. Events. The truth is we didn't change a thing. Yeah, yeah. All we did was reflect the historic record yeah, and it yeah. just so happens to be ripped right out of today's headlines. Right. Not just about politics and the president and the free press, but yeah, also yeah, yeah. Uh, gender issues and yeah, uh, yeah. equality in the, in the workplace, what have you. But then yes. what's so odd is that it's so, uh, as I say, reflects what's going on. Yeah. And yet, ironically, the, is it true the White House have asked for a, a private screening of I, this? Well, yeah. I think that's... They, they do that. I think anybody yeah. who is president can call up and say, send me the movie. Whether they watch it or not, I don't know. <laughs> what? Leave a note in the, in the DVD. <laughs> <laughs> We shoot a new scene. We will yeah, shoot, shoot a whole new scene. 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 You and Meryl just go. Yeah. <laughs> I have. I. I got to make a phone call. I got to get this into works. It's going to take a while. <laughs> Now, Maisie's latest film uh, will appeal to children and grown-ups everywhere. Uh, Early Man, it's the latest work from Nick Park and Aardman Studios. It opens on the 26th of January, and it's a really sweet, funny story. Uh, so tell us about it, who, who you are. Um, so it's a uh, prehistoric uh, uh, comedy about a uh, tribe uh, who is run, like, head up by a character called Doug, who is played by Eddie Redmayne. Um, around the time that the Stone Age is being taken over by the Bronze Age. And uh, I play a character called Guna, who basically helps the tribe um, win back their, their home. Because it's all based around football. Yeah, so they yeah. have a, a, a football match between the Bronze Age and the, and the Stone Age. And my character is from the Bronze Age um, and she's not allowed to play on the sacred turf because she's a woman. So mm -hmm. she helps the tribe um, uh, win this football match on the condition that she gets to play too. Gee, it sounds like the post. It's as tense. It's as tense. It really is. Yeah. Um, and now, what happened? So you did loads of your voice... <clears throat> At one stage, you so you're... so, it, so uh, I started in 2016 and then finished at uh, the end of last year, um, and I just had sort of maybe seven or eight sessions over the course of you know like months between, um, and I'd completely forgotten after my first session that I. Uh, I was doing, I was part of the film and I got braces put on so as I could sort out my Ooh. wonky teeth and I went back and. Uh, I, I was um, recording my dialogue and I had this little speech impediment that I hadn't noticed. And when I went back the time after, they were like, we're going to have to re-record absolutely everything right. that you've just done because you sound strange. Because <laughs> you've talked to us before, Tom, about that repetition. It's, it's the hardest, honestly, it's, it's grueling work. Because you can't move off the microphone, you have mm -hmm. to stay right. What? What? Let's play a game. What was one of the most nondescript lines your character had? Nondescript. Well, um, just like uh, you know. Um. Um. I'm, Come on, I'm, boys, I'm... let me play or something. Yeah, like that. right. We'll all go right. with that. Uh, now I want you for all of the audience to ring as many different meetings out of <laughs> "Come on, boys" <laughs> let me play, as possible, and I will tell you. 
<laughs> when we're finished. Okay. Is that what it is? That's what that's what recording it is. It's right. that, a lot of the time, they're not sure whether it's going to be right or not yeah. until they they get to the animating and 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 figuring out how they're going to like animate a body around this voice. Yeah. So there's not a lot of payoff until you watch the film complete. You, you find out they used the third version that you did. Exactly. Well, you know, Four hundred seventeen. Because yeah. while you're going, there, come on, boys, let me play. Come on, boys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on, let me play! Let me play! And they're like, hmm. <laughs> they press, are they in the booth where they press the talk back Nick button? Nick likes to be in the booth. Could you, could you do it as though you're having a nervous breakdown? <laughs> I am having a nervous uh, breakdown. Yeah, I, I, just, I just did. Yeah, that was great. We're going to send a fellow in with some needle nose pliers to, <laughs> to remove your braces. Because we're just, <laughs> just not getting It's very, very hard it's work. tedious, but it was great fun. I, I'd love to be <laughs> She's selling the movie. <laughs> Did they save for the end your grunts and things like in your but action that's my sequences? That's favorite. I, I enjoy doing that. They do that, they do that at the very end of the day. Is that and like the, the music, like ad libs? Well, no, yeah, what it, it's, yeah, yeah. A, it's a long list and it says grunt uh, uh, <laughs> effect land. And so you sit there and go, ooh! <laughs> 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 and you just do as many as you can. It was a football match as yeah. well, so there's a lot of ooh! Yeah, yeah exactly. Very good. <laughs> the music. I uh, well, tell you, we can have a listen and a watch now. Uh, this is your character, Guna, helping Doug, played by Eddie Redmayne, uh, to steal some footballs. Who is that? <gasps> Scarpet! Stop! Hands! This way! Ooh. Oh! They went to that way! Uh -huh. No! Not the way! Oh. Oh. <laughs> Give me those! Quick! You're really good. Thanks. I do a lot of practice. Wow. Oh, mom. And what makes this one so special is that, you know, because they're real, it, it's 3D. Now, I don't know if you know this, Ardman have very kindly lent us Guna. Uh, this is <gasps> real Guna. Oh, that's actually what they pose? Yeah, this is Guna. Uh, the there she is. Look at her. Uh, I like the jaunty hand on the hip. <laughs> I'm good at football, but I'm a woman. <laughs> Isn't that so? Oh, and it, yep. it is made of... Plasticine, Plasticine. Indeed. I think we actually have something for you, also. A gift from me? <laughs> the the Ardman people. Really? Just wait there. Just two seconds. OK. Did you Ooh. bring Graham anything? We <laughs> <laughs> brought this together. We're <laughs> <laughs> right. This is, this is, this is. <laughs> How cool is that? Thank you so much. That's amazing. Oh my God. <laughs> that is so good. You look about 40. <laughs> I look younger here, though, don't I? I look younger. <laughs> I look about 47. It's mostly the size of the feet. That <laughs> That's a genius. Do I get to keep this? Absolutely. OK, show's over. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Thank you so, so much. That's great. Now, uh, this is a huge year for Anthony Joshua because uh, by the end of 2018, the plan is you will be the first man to unify all four belts and become the undisputed champion of the world. Potentially. That's the plan. Potentially, that's the plan. OK. That's a but you, thank you, thank you. You've got two belts already. You've got three. three. You, hang on, so... There's five. Oh, there's five. OK, so you've got three, so you need these extra two, and they're going to happen this year. We're now, working on it. Yeah, and I thought, right. hopefully, you are going to announce a fight soon, I think. Yeah. So is, who's the first one with? It was either out of the two belt holders. So let's say there's A, B, C, D, E. OK. Um, so on and so forth. So I've got three of them. There's two more left. Yep. One's in America, one's in New Zealand. So I was looking at both options. America would have been phenomenal because 
You know, when I'm walking down the street, the lads are like, listen, mate, I need a reason to get to Vegas. When you going out there to fuck? <laughs> <laughs> America would have been amazing, but we've had some difficulties, so um, we're looking to bring the other guy, Joseph Parker, who's a, a, a tidy champion there. He is there. He has one of the other belts. Can I just yes, say, course. that looks like it's going to be quite an easy fight. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely hope so. <laughs> But you know what it is, you can't He's underestimate... He's king of pies. <laughs> What's his nickname? <laughs> Should I give him a nickname? <laughs> pie. The pie. <laughs> no, I can't underestimate I mean, anyone. He must be a world-class athlete, but he doesn't look like one, does he? I mean... You can't underestimate... You know, the thing is with, with boxing, I think, you know, the things that you lack, you can make up for in power in the heavyweight division. Yeah. And there's not... Like, there's not one heavyweight that hasn't gone without getting dropped in their whole career. And that's what I've realised is that um, a lot of fighters have lost their titles through underestimating other athletes. Like, for instance, Lennox Lewis, when he was... He was filming, I think, Ocean's Eleven. Okay, or, yeah. And he lost his title because he wasn't focused. And no, no heavyweight champion is one heavyweight champion of the world. They're all two-time heavyweight champion, three-time, because of the last thing they lose is the power in their punch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can't... Even though he looks like the pie-eater... <laughs> 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 he could be packing a wallop as well, so I'm going to be... I'm focused. I'm in training camp now. You know his cigarette weapon? Armpit hair. <laughs> look at that. Look at that. Look at that. It looks like he's got cats under his hair. I'm going to put that in the contract. Shave, shave those armpits, man. <laughs> <laughs> or you can buy my Lynx can at Asda Tesco. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, so uh, they peel him off the floor, they roll him up like a carpet, and send him back to New Zealand. Yeah. Who, who's the American guy then? Who's the next one you have to beat? He is Deontay Wilder and got a big mouth. Here, he, as you can see, look at that. Look can at I just that. say, this is going to be harder? <laughs> 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 yeah, I think you're doing them in the right order. <laughs> But it's, it's interesting, so this is the plan next, and this is when the guys where I grew up can get to Vegas and have a good time and watch a bit of boxing as well. And um, this will be the fight that makes history. But it's interesting because, let's say I've done the hard work, so I've managed to keep the four belts, and I've got to put everything on the line to bring them back home, so it's a real tough one. Yeah, because, so what's the story? So you go into that match with four belts. Does he then have five if he beats you? Then he he creates history. Oh my God! This is the situation. Oh, right yeah. good noise, everyone. Very good. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, no, but that is that. We'll be in cinema soon. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that is a huge. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. That's it. That's that the is. I imagine you'll be quite nervous that evening. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a lot, a lot. But uh, you're also you're doing the fighting, you're preparing for all of that. But you're also you're doing some promoting now as well, which is unusual, isn't it, for people when they're still boxing to do it's promoting? True. I've always had the mindset. I don't know. I've always understood that athletes kind of come to the end of their careers and they say, okay, I'm starting up a management company. I want to guide younger athletes because I think it's the natural transition from athlete to what I'm going to do in retirement. But I always thought. It's always good to be two steps ahead of the game and kind of use the momentum while I'm competing to kind of guide and help athletes. So, yeah, yeah. like, um, I grew up in Watford, moved to London, so I'm a proud sponsor of my gym where I grew up, so all the kids that I support them. And now I've got two of my good friends who are with the management company and um, Lawrence Okoli, Joshua Boatsi, who are fighting Fred Third. And it's kind of guiding them, giving them the best advice and not only advice, they can bounce ideas off of me as well. It's just like an organic relationship. And I know that sometimes people want to see if the grass is greener. And as I said, come to me for advice. It's no problem. I know how the game goes. And if you ever want advice on where to go next, we can always guide you onto that as well. Yeah, yeah. And boxing now is like rock and roll. I mean, everybody <laughs> boxes with. But you've also mixed with uh, royalty. Prince Harry himself. What did he asked you to take part in his Radio 4 programme. Yeah, there's a picture. He asked oh, you to yeah. take um, part in his Radio 4 programme. <laughs> It was an honour, you know. Yeah. Um, was that before or after you hit him? Looks <laughs> <laughs> like he's recovering from the blow there. That's me smiling at the six security guards watching me as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but real humble guy. Really yeah. cool guy. You going to the wedding? I would love to, you know, and um, big respect to Harry, you know. <laughs> he took one of the sisters. <laughs> <laughs> he took one of the sisters. <laughs>
So be respected in. And I'd love to, you know. I'd love to. Yeah. Yeah. Be handing out some Jamaican rum. <laughs> <laughs> You go to the afters. You go to the afters. The disco. Yeah. You know. See if she got any sisters, aunties. I'm single. Because um, fighting, and you've been in so many movies, you must have done umpteen fights. Oh, you? dear. Uh, I, I, no. <laughs> You've done some. I, look, I get cast. He ran. He ran. I, get, I ran. <laughs> <laughs> he ran. <laughs> yeah, but I run fast. Very fast. fast. <laughs> no, when it comes down to fight scenes, I get cast as the pie eater. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I, did, I did have one. Uh, I got beat up by Paul Bettany in uh, The Da Vinci Code. Mm. And uh, it was a moment uh, where we were supposed to... We rehearsed it a little bit. And in movie fights... Everybody treats it like it's a real fight. Serious. You know, everybody, okay, are you ready? I'm ready. And, you know, you miss each other like that. It's like, <laughs> yeah. It's like, it looks like. But, but Paul came rushing in, and I met him, and what happened to happen, he was supposed to knock me down against a desk, and then I landed on the ground. And the way it sounded was, hey, 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 ah. <laughs> <laughs> When I hit the floor, <laughs> I farted. <laughs> so that's why somebody else gets to play. I, I don't think that's happening. Oh. Does that ever happen in the think, middle of the ring? Remember, you do things that don't actually happen. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Joseph Parker does. Yeah. <laughs> uh, amazing. You started in the show so young at 12. So yeah. did you have to do... They obviously had to train you to do all your fighting. Yeah. Um, I, well, they, I, my character was also learning. So as my oh, character okay. learned, I learned. She wasn't, like, amazing from the first episode. Like, she wasn't yeah. supposed to be, like, know what she was doing. So it was nice that as the seasons went on, I learned more and more. Yeah, because now you're proper kick-ass. Yeah. Well, like... When, when we're fake punching each other, yeah. <laughs> but not in real. <laughs> Although I'd never underestimate like your opponent, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You learn the head whip as, as well? Go, if, if, yeah. Throw a punch right there and I'll show you what it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good. Good. On it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sell it after the fact. <laughs> <laughs> and you get fans wanting a really specific thing from you, don't Is you? It? Yeah, it's a little odd. So my character on the show, she has a list of people that she wants to kill. <laughs> um, and it's you're dark. crazy. Well, no, she, they're all justified for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, she has a list and she recites the names and, and um, she's been through a lot of trauma of a backstory. <laughs> and it's what keeps her going and it's what keeps her fighting even though she's lost both of her parents. Um, so a lot of people come up to me in the street and they want me to recite the names but then add their name. Oh. <laughs> I would actually like that as well. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, would... do you know the names? I do, yeah. Oh, can you... There's can a you... lot of them. Is it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, sure. you speak quite quickly. <laughs> which camera? Which camera should you... Yeah, there you go. Uh, do, do we have... We've got some, some tension music running here? We do. Well, here we go. Here we go. Okay, off you go. Off you go. Joffrey, Cersei, Ilan Payne, the Mountain, Beric Dondarrion, Thoris of Myr, the Red Woman, Tom Hanks, <laughs> <laughs> Anthony Joshua. <gasps> Graham Nutt. Yay! Thank you for waiting for that. Thank you for waiting. Please kill me. <laughs> I don't very quickly, Andy. Uh, you know, this match isn't is set yet, but are you in training now? Yeah, yeah. So, are you still doing this thing? You posted this video, and it's a training technique I've never seen before. <laughs> uh, so, is this a genuine training technique? <laughs> 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 Do you know what it is, right? <laughs> This, this is, a, a cat this is toy? a... This is a cat toy. <laughs> <laughs> All products sold in as the test <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. This isn't sold, it's just made from a normal cap, uh, elastic string and a tennis ball. Boxing's like that, I swear to you. It's market, so grassroots. Market this. This is, it's this is... Oh, yeah, no. It's the exciting game that everybody loves to play. <laughs> it's punch ball. Yes, punch ball leads for ah, hours of fun. Ah, oh, quite easy to make. Quite oh, easy to make. Thank you. Yeah. Holy cow. But you know what it is? That is the reality we live in, because that was about...
the one thousandth video that I had done that looked good. Ah. I'm not good at this. No, it's not. I'm not good at this. Well, let's see. Can we go back to it? And yeah, just see how let's, let's see. You are really good in the video. Can we see the video again? Oh, here we go. There you go. This bad boy. Look at that. Yes. There's a lot of editing in this. <laughs> Does this mean you will be able to defeat any tennis ball you can? <laughs> it is much harder than it looks, because I, I tried try it this afternoon. One. Try it. I'm, try, uh, try. I'm good at that. Uh, OK. Very, I'm good. I, uh, this is the host. <laughs> that's, that's why they pay me. I, I, I can do this shit. Uh, no, so I tried this this afternoon, because does, that does not look hard, does it? Mm. That no, does not look hard. No. Let, let's try okay. to see. So do you throw it up and hit it, or what do you do? However you feel comfortable, there's no right or wrong technique, but just keep it away from your face. <laughs> oh, go on, keep it going. Oh. Oh, go on. oh that's my that's my oh, 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 <laughs> right. Missed me by that. Got it on the right camera. I took it right in the face. Uh, right, quickly. Uh, it's music me, time. Does that not look like fun? That yeah, looks it does like fun. Yeah. 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 We have one for everybody in the audience. <laughs> You're chasing Oprah, uh, aren't you? Uh, <laughs> you get a punch ball. You get a punch ball. You get a punch ball. <laughs> It is music time. This Swedish folk band are one of my favourite artists at the moment. Uh, they were nominated for Best International Group at the Brits, and last year they stormed the stage at Glastonbury. Here performing, it's a shame, it is First Aid Kit! <laughs>
Good. Thank you so much. That sounded fantastic. Um, drink your champagne, do oh, you? Yes. You've earned it. Yes. Cheers. Uh, it's Cheers. a shame is off the new album Ruins, yeah. and that's out on uh, next Friday, so the nineteenth. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. And uh, so, what's the the story? So you you have you moved to LA? No. 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 But you made this record in LA. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been to LA? <laughs> We're we, uh, back on track. We're back on track. <laughs> we wrote the record in L.A. I see. I knew yes. there was some connection. Yes. Yeah, I'm not just yes. making it up. Yeah. Um, but now, is it true you're not a fan of L.A.? No, Ooh. we love L.A. We just um, <laughs> <laughs> they we do. It. But um, <laughs> well, the thing was, we we had this trip plan. We we're gonna go right, and it was very exciting. And then um, my relationship ended just before going there. Oh. So so oh. I was not in a Great state when we came there. But. Yeah, no, I'm so I feel bad now. Um, that oh, I brought no, it up. no, you're good. You're it's good. Okay. You're all it's good okay. again. Yeah. yeah. You got a record out of it. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> That's way more important than a relationship. Yeah. <laughs> Are you greeted at the airport with that question? You know, did you just break up with somebody? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Los Angeles. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I would mention your tour, but there's no need. It's sold out already. Wow. Yeah, and that's amazing. Congratulations. Um, are you going to add extra dates or anything? Well, we'll be back in the summer. Yeah. Festivals. So oh, okay, yeah. you do the festivals and all those yes. things. Yes. Excellent, excellent. I love the music. Thank and you. Uh, and good luck so with the tour. And thank you so much for doing that. First aid kit, everybody. Anyway. Uh, okay. It's, uh, that's nearly it, but we do have time for a visit to the big red chair. Uh, yes, who's there? Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hi, what's your name? I'm Katie. Katie, lovely. And uh, where are you from, Katie? Uh, I'm from Guildford. Guildford? She's from Guildford. It's a lovely part of the world. Commuter belt. Price. It's no LA. No, no, it's not. <laughs> no. <laughs> She's happy. Um, uh, so, uh, what do you do in Guildford? Uh, well, I actually work in London. Oh, um, I see. you commute. See, I told I you it was commute about. <laughs> um, uh, what do you do in London? I work in fetal medicine at St George's Hospital. Oh, wow. Proper, serious job. <laughs> wow. Uh, off you go with your story. OK, it was back in 2000, 2001. I was lucky enough to be uh, on a sailing holiday in the Greek islands. And we dropped in on a harbour called Fiscado on Cephalonia. And it's around about the time when Captain Corelli's mandolin was being oh, filmed. Oh, and oh. rumour was that Tom Hanks was playing the lead, as I know now. It's it's not true, but um, <laughs> we uh, had decided to eat at a taverna, and because we'd had a quite a few drinks on board, uh, the crew that, or the, well, not the crew, but the friends and family that I was with, they ended up going off down to the taverna where we'd booked, and I cleared up the boat, and I came on afterwards. And I was walking through the other tavernas on the quayside, and somebody caught my eye, like, really caught my eye, and I thought, oh, I know that person. <laughs> 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 it wasn't you, was it? So, well, I, I actually have been to Fishgardo in Catalonia, and I was there around the time they were making. No, you were. No, you were. Yeah. No, you were. It's very possible. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. no, yeah. you're making that up. It, it's right. <laughs> Catalonia is right across from the Ithiki or Ithaca. No, you are making that no, up. I have been to. I have been sitting in a in a taverna in Catalonia uh, in in Fishcardo many many times. Should we see if it was you? Well, <laughs> uh, is she still alive? <laughs> Can we mend her? Can we rebuild her? Okay, let's get her back. Okay, so cut to the chase. <laughs> was it Tom Hanks? Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> A short story to go to love. Uh, that's amazing. Yeah. 
Yeah. Wow. I oh, did. but it's fabulous. That, that's incredible. Greece is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, poor story, but Greece. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, sh should we try one more? One more. One more. This is the charm. This is the charm. Hello. Hello. Hi. Uh, what's your name? Lisa. Lisa. Lovely Lisa. And uh, what do you do? Um, I work in marketing, financial services. Ooh, okay. I am no wiser. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, off you go with this story. Um, okay, it's about 20 years ago. I'd been on the pill for a little while, decided it was time for a change, wanted to try out the cap. Uh, <laughs> when... I love this story. I love this story. Okay, so, so you're planning. off the pill, you're uh, trying the cap, yeah, why not? Bring the yeah. changes. Okay, so clinic and um, met this very lovely nurse who demonstrated me pictorially how to use the cap how to insert it make sure it was comfortable etc yeah of course and then handed it to me and said okay now you need to try told me to take off my bottom half and um, I got into the squat position which the pictures have suggested <laughs> she then said she was needed to pop out and she'd be back in five minutes when I could ask any questions so I got down to the job I was struggling somewhat with this cap to get it in to get it in the right position <laughs> at which point I heard a very sharp sudden cough and looked up to see the whole waiting room wow. in of me where she had not closed the door properly. <laughs> You can walk. Very good story. Beautiful. Beautiful. And well done, everyone. If you like to join us on the show and have a go in that red chair, you can contact us via our website at this address. And that is it for tonight. Please say you thank you to all of my guests. First aid kit. Yeah. Anthony Joshua. Maisie Williams. And Mr. Tom Hay. Week with singer-songwriter Seagreed, Fifty Shades' Jamie Dornan, Oscar-nominated Liam Neeson, and the great Dame Helen Mirren. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye! <laughs>